Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are starting our path to the Richelieu. Which means we get to start with the Corbet. Now, I'm not a particularly big fan of the Corbet, but uh, let's get into it and we'll talk about it. So first of all, we're going to go over our commander builds. This is the first video of the series. Which means this one's going to be a little bit longer because we're going to go over multiple commander builds. Alright, so I personally, on my French battleships, prefer Robert Jajard with Azure Lane Sharnhorst if you got him. If not, use Andrew Cunningham for a boost to dispersion. And then Palo de Revel for that boost to the reload time. The French battleships tend to have shotgun dispersion quite a bit. Uh, even at higher tiers. So... Being able to reload the guns more often means you throw more crap at the wall, hoping that some of it's going to stick, if you catch my drift. Alright, so we're going to be using Flamble Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Megalomania, and uh, Reaching Out XXL, with Will to Rebuild, obviously. Alright, this is the main build. Now, you could all obviously go with Marksmanship for better dispersion, but that's going to slow your rudder shift time down. And uh, early on in this series, for sure, you don't want to slow your rudder down because your turrets are really, really slow and you want to be able to turn the ship a lot. So keep that in mind. Uh, now, what other commanders could we use? Well, uh, let me double check here. I think it's this guy, uh, Emile Japrat. He is the tank build commander. Andrew Cunningham, obviously, uh, that can be replaced with... Uh, Shardhorst, and then I have Robert Jajard here for the extra penetration, but you could also swap that out for uh, Palo de Revel if you want some extra reload. This is a very old build for me, so keep that in mind. Um, personally, I would probably swap this guy for Palo de Revel, uh, which I forget. They, they screw up everything. Every time I get used to something, they screw it up. Like, they've completely changed this. I'm sure he's nearby, but I just completely missed him. So if we go here, yeah, it's it's set for battleships. So let's see where the free. Okay, so that's at least in order. So we should be going this direction for the uh, Italian. There he is, Palo de Rebel. So that's who I would swap for, and then obviously boost it so that you don't have to wait. Um, I have a ridiculous amount of Commander XP, so I can do that. Uh, you might have to play the seven games to get used to it, but. Either way, I don't have him completely maxed out because tank builds on the French battleships didn't seem to work very well for me. Uh, they're just too inaccurate. So you have to kind of go with the dispersion build, in my opinion, and then try to uh, buff the reload speed rather than try to go full dispersion. At least, that's my opinion. But again, we're using uh, Brawler Perk. I would actually swap out for either uh, not one for the nuisance or no fly zone, depending on what you want. Early on, no fly zone, not that big a deal, so probably not one for the nuisance. Maybe at high tiers you go with no fly zone because the AA on the high tier French battleships is actually really good. So uh, keep that in mind. All right, so what else could you use? Well, there's Azure Lane Dunkirk. Now you can see that I have not actually used Azure Lane Dunkirk, but Azure Lane Dunkirk is kind of a jack of all trades. She's got a little bit of everything. So we've got Flamble Cannoneer, which is a dispersion perk which is what I would choose. Gyrating Drill Bit, another dispersion perk, but she's also got Frontal Fire, which uh, switches the, or knocks down the shell switching, or shell type switch time. Good God, I can't speak. I apologize. Uh, which is her unique skill. But then you've got Megalomania, and you can run Master Mechanic. So this is a really good build, and something that I may be looking into in the near future. I've just never actually given Dunkirk a look, to be honest. So this is essentially like uh, Henry Hyde for uh, the Germans. You've got a dispersion build, but you also get extra heals. This is actually a great idea. So maybe that's what I would go with. Uh, then, of course, her base traits flooding uh, damage to your ship is reduced. That's eh, not that useful. I guess it is if you take a lot of torpedoes, but most of the time I don't. So there's that uh but yeah keep an eye out for a build on my jean bart and richelieu for uh, a dunkirk build in the near future it's probably something i'll be looking into all right 
So with that being said, we have Robert's yard. You've already seen that. Let's go ahead and look at what we've got. We're using aiming systems mod one. Okay. Now the French battleships get this extra perk, which is the armament durability mod, which is to help keep your main batteries from being shot off. This is in direct, uh, you know, violation of everybody who's ever shot the guns off of a Jean Bart or a Richelieu. Uh, this has nothing to do with the rest of the line. It is literally Richelieu and Jean Bart. That is the whole reason this thing was put in. So keep that in mind. Uh, and honestly, I don't know that Jean Bart actually gets that that upgrade. I know Richelieu does, but uh, I'm fairly confident Jean Bart might not. But still, with the shotgun dispersion that you get out of the, the French battleships, you probably want as much dispersion uh, buffing as you can get, in my opinion. All right, so uh, with that, we are fully upgraded. You guys saw that. We are running community contributor flag and the type two camo for that extra incoming fire dispersion, okay? Stats. We're running 38,950 hit points with a 10% torpedo reduction. We have 12 305 millimeter guns, but you can only ever get 10 of them on target at a time. This is due to uh, two wing turrets at the center of the ship. One on the right side, one on the left side of the ship, and they can't crossfire. So keep that in mind. You only get a 10 gun broadside, but it is kind of nice having that extra gun on the backside because sometimes you can catch people off guard with it. And we're going to try to showcase that in this one. Uh, but we've gotten the firing range to 15.7, which is not particularly good, uh, but not horrible at the same time. Reload time is 25.4 seconds, which is pretty good because uh, we've managed to knock that down. I think at low tiers, the 305s generally reload at like 32 to 35 seconds, depending on the ship. Uh, so being able to knock that down to 25 seconds gives you a huge advantage. But again, it comes down to being able to hit the target as well. And the Corvée struggles. 180 degree turn time, 40 seconds, so not bad. Uh, not great, but not horrible. HE shell damage is 4,200 with a 22% chance to set fires. That, that fire chance is a bit on the low side, uh, and it does catch you uh, into some trouble when you try to uh, beat people who know what they're doing in battleships and you have to switch back and forth to try to burn them down while you're also hitting them with AP. Uh, AP shell maximum damage, 9,130, uh, so not bad. 139 millimeter, 55 caliber MLE 1910 secondaries. You have 22 of those that reach out to 3.7 kilometers, reload in 10 seconds, and have a maximum HE shell damage of 2,000 with an 8% chance to set fire. Secondary is not bad. The only downside of them is they're pretty short range. 3.7 kilometers is, is not a whole lot of fun to get into when you're uh, going up against destroyers. All right, AA defense. You have 13.2 millimeter 76 calibers that are you have eight of. They do 20 damage per second and fire out to 1.2 kilometers. So very, very short range. And then 13.2 millimeter 76 caliber uh, CADs that you have 16 of, those are dual guns. They do 28 damage per second and reach out to 1.2 kilometers. And then you have the 75 millimeter 50 caliber 1922s that you have eight of that do 14 damage per second and reach out to three kilometers. So the AA on this thing, pretty bad. Maneuverability. And that owes itself to the fact that like planes were just coming out at this time like if you're looking at 1910 well i guess it says 1929 second ago we saw 1910s there you go the guns are 1910 so i don't know exactly when this thing was built i guess we'll find out in a moment but uh yeah there wasn't a whole lot of planes at the time so aa pretty bad maximum speed 18.9 knots that's pretty normal for low tiers with the exception of the ishizuki Turning circle is pretty good, 580 knots or 580 meters with a 12.3 second rudder shift. So again, the ship turns really, really well. Use it. Dreadnought shuffle, do the right thing. Take, take, uh, tank the incoming rounds and then turn out, get your guns on target and then turn back before they can shoot you again. Detectability by sea, 12.8. Detectability by air is 10.2. Two is always guaranteed. And the 9.7 kilometer detectability while firing in smoke. All right, let's look at the armor. The armor is actually pretty good. And you'll notice that this has an extended belt, which is very nice. Uh, but it's at the waterline, just like uh, some of the other ships. So 
It can be overmatched from the front, but you gotta aim high. All right. Uh, it's got 120 millimeters of belt armor at the front, which is ridiculous. Keep that. And unlike a lot of ships, this actually goes all the way to the bow, rather than leaving a gap in between the two armor plates. All right. So uh, let's put that back on and show the 19 millimeters that I'm talking about. So you can see that that upper layer is 19 millimeters thick. It can be overmatched, but you got to aim high to do it. All right. So uh, conning tower, we don't care about. The uh, casemate armor, we don't really care about too much. I guess it does show the belt. So uh, yeah, you can see here that the arbor belt's 250 millimeters thick, which is really, really good. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about uh, taking too many hits there, as long as you angle. And above that's actually pretty thick as well, with 142 millimeters. So as long as you can angle relatively well, you may still take some hits into the casemates. Uh, you see the casemate guns that are inside the hull. Those are casemate guns. Uh, they, there are some flat spots there that can be penetrated, as you can see, uh, with plunging fire especially. So keep that in mind. You may take some penetrations, but for the most part, if you're angled well, you're going to ricochet. All right, let's get rid of all of that. Get rid of that. And look at our citadel. Now, the citadel on this thing is very deep. It's underwater. It's very large, but it's very deep. And you can see it has the angles. So even if you were to get some shots into it, unless it's plunging fire, you're not likely to citadel this thing. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty good overall design as far as armor and protection goes the guns are lacking and that's just because they're very old guns so uh it's got long reach above average main battery range hit them before they can hit you now i don't know i thought that was pretty average for reach like 15 to 16 kilometers at this range or at this tier maybe i'm wrong uh but clearly that's what they're saying compromising Higher caliber AP shells may overpin the armor, but may still arm depending on your shell velocity. Again, this thing's got pretty decent armor, so you're just going to assume that those shells are going to arm if they go inside your ship, okay? Don't go flat broadside if you can help it. Uh, like I said, you're not likely to be citadeled, but it's still, if you go, if you over angle and end up giving too much of a flat surface, battleships are going to go right through it. They're going to punch you in the mouth. Uh, and because you're running megalomania, you actually have a lower hit point pull. All right, so Corbet, the first dreadnought battleship built in France. The ship carried 12 305 millimeter guns and powerful secondary guns. Her sides were reinforced with vast armored areas. Her disadvantages included weak torpedo protection. She entered service in 1913, so there you go. And uh, there were four of them in the series. So let's take a look at it. Again, I love dreadnoughts. You guys know this. I love seeing those casemates poking out of everywhere. And you can see that there's quite a few casemates. You got nine right here that I'm looking at. Um, that, that's a lot of firepower up close. Now remember, they're pretty short range. That's that's the downside. But overall, it's a, it's a pretty good ship if the guns can actually hit what they're, uh, they're aiming at. And we're gonna showcase some of that in the coming video. So, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on New Dawn. Now, this is a map that I always, like, forget what the map is until, like, halfway through the map. And then I'm like, oh, that's what map this is. So, uh, yeah, this is just a map that always throws me off initially, depending on where I spawn. And I spawned in a really interesting location. It's perfect for a big, fat, heavily armored dreadnought to take advantage of some very, very, like, broadside targets. So that's why when I spawn here, I like to mi go mid. And I do the same thing when I spawn on the other side of this island. Because you can spawn on either side of this big island in the middle. Uh, it's kind of weird that way. But if you do, going in and trying to get this base cap early is huge. Uh, on the other side, you kind of have to dog leg back to do it. But it's still the same thing. You still want to try to get this center base cap. Because it's a huge point of contention late in the match. It's very difficult to um, capture this base late in the match. So the earlier you can cap it, the better. And so we're going to push straight into Bravo. And I'll be real honest, there's 
there's one person that drives me absolutely bonkers, and that's aircraft carriers. And I know what you're saying. Well, aircraft carriers aren't a person's pardon. I know. It's one class that drives me bonkers. See, with all the other classes, they have to put themselves in harm's way to attack you. Um, with the exception of maybe Japanese destroyers. Uh, but all of, all of the destroyers are about to get a rude awakening in the near future, by the way. Um, I can't say any more than that. But just keep that in mind. Um, and then on top of that, like, aircraft carriers, they drive me nuts for one reason. They never actually have to put themselves in harm's way. They put their planes in harm's way, which could affect them late game if, you, if they keep shredding, if you keep shredding their planes. Like, it, it could be a problem for them late game. But, yeah, early on, like, it's just, there's nothing there. There's no threat to them. They can literally outrun most ships at any tier. And on top of that, they have destroyer concealment for some reason. Like, meaning you have to get within like six kilometers to spot them for the most part, which is ridiculous. They're the largest ships on the ocean. I don't understand how they have such like ridiculously low concealment. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take some shots at this Fetlana. Now, I realized pretty early on that this Fetlana was not playing. Now, normally, you would try to get rid of it, or you would try to just let him sit there, and you would keep going about it and killing the rest of your team. But, I don't want a Russian cruiser waking up late in the match and playing keep away if they have the points lead. So, I decide I'm just going to focus him until I kill him. Now, obviously, me trying to get all these shots on the Svetlana, uh, trying to get all the guns on him, is actually keeping me from capturing this base at the moment. So you can see I'm starting to turn in towards the base to try to get in here. But again, one more time, I'm going to end up swinging out to get the rear guns involved. Now you can see we fired two salvos at him already. We've only pulled 8K off of him. Uh, he's angled to us. Like, this is beautiful. If, the, if you were ever going to shoot, and this dispersion is what you want, please give me more of that in the Corbett. And there we absolutely punish him, and he's lucky not to be citadel to death. Even though I say he's lucky, he's just AFK, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, battleships looking for uh, chances to hit cruisers that are bow on, especially low tiers, because you're almost guaranteed citadels when it happens. Uh, but at this range, we just can't really do anything. You can see there's a destroyer trying to yoink our kill already. But we get another shot off, get another decent dispersion roll that time, and finish him off. Getting our first kill of the game, we're up to 21,000. Now, we're in the in the middle, we're capturing the base, we're trying not to get anybody else's attention at the moment. Uh, you can see I'm kind of looking across the map to see what's going on. I was hoping that he would spot that uh, carrier, but then I started noticing that we got quite a problem over here. Uh, we've got a destroyer rushing our carrier, we've got a cruiser rushing our carrier, we've got a battleship rushing our carrier. So, I need to try to support him if I can, even if I don't agree with the fact that the carrier's in the game and that I, I just don't, I don't like him in general. They're here, they're not going anywhere, we gotta put up with them. So I might as well try to protect him. Now, to his credit, the, the destroyer, or the carrier kills the destroyer. So, I, I stop here initially just to make sure we get the base cap, and as soon as we get that cap, we're out of the base, we're looking for targets, and we gotta try to priorita prioritize targets. Kirov, obviously, is the faster of the two that's chasing him, and is the closest, and obviously has him lit. So I need to try to get rid of this man. And so we take, we use auto-aim initially, and then we adjust it, because we know it tends to be behind the target. And uh, we get a good shot right off the bat. We are being hit by Nishizuki, who's going to spam HE for the entire match, which is just insane to me. Um... You've got really good armor piercing. I have no idea why you're spamming HE and an Ishizuki for the entire match. Probably running a Fusu build, if I had to guess. But uh, we're going to take another shot, and those are tight, man. That's the kind of salvo that you dream of. But we get a good hit. 7,000 damage. No Citadel, unfortunately. But, you know, this is World of Warships. What is the golden rule of getting Citadels in World of Warships? You can only get a Citadel when they have no health, right? That's how that works. When you've got them down to no health, you've already hit them a bajillion times, got all the overpins in the world. Then suddenly, you're allowed to get the Citadel, right? Yep, that's how that works. Every time. Every time! It's it's without fail. You, want, you think I'm wrong? You think I'm lying? No, we're going to do it again. I'm going to show you. 
and we're gonna do it on a ship that should have been death struck in the first album okay now Ishizuki is the next one he's pretty quick in his own right we're gonna go ahead and take that shot we've got very very good dispersion but it is horizontal and uh, very nice hit there those I have no problem with those shots when you get pure horizontal dispersion are like godly I love those now, unfortunately for our carrier, I have to stop shooting at Ishizuki because I've got the Peter Veliki pushing the bow of my ship. Now, I noticed that the Peter Veliki does not have any camo, and he is also basically broadside to me, trying to get all of his guns to bear, and at this range, I should have no trouble deleting this man. We get four penetrations and not a single citadel on a broadside Russian battleship who is also spamming HE at me. He gets a double fire on me, because of course he does. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna damage con that. And I was fairly confident that with my uh, faster reload, I would be able to out-reload this guy and punch him in the mouth. And sure enough, we finally get the Citadel. Now obviously he wasn't down to no health, but sir, that should have happened in the first salvo, let's be real. It's a Russian battleship. If they're broadside, they die, that's how that works every time without fail now here you can see i'm going for the ishizuki again i'm still trying to save our carrier uh from long range i get but but i'm still trying i'm not just abandoning the guy so i get a shot out and uh looks pretty solid but ends up not doing a whole lot we get one shatter I thought that was going to be good. I think he changed direction, but that's when I noticed the Diné. And this is a situation where that extra gun that you couldn't fire comes in handy. Remember the really slow traverse times? Yeah, we're going to be able to shoot at this guy much quicker than we would have otherwise. So we get a shot here while he's not paying a whole lot of attention, but he does turn in, unfortunately, right as we shoot the gun. So we get one overpin. Dene, if you don't know, Dene is literally a walking citadel or a floating citadel. This thing is made of citadel and will get it itself annihilated. But for some reason, the game is just like, no, uh, Spartan, you've got battleship guns and it's a Dene who's bow tanking you or slightly angled. You shouldn't be able to citadel him. And then we take a shot. He actually turns all the way back and dodges. He's just lucky at this point. He's not doing it on purpose, I think. He's just getting lucky when I decide to shoot. And then finally, we get the shot that gives me the Citadel when he has no health. There seems to be a bit of a, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A pattern developing. Now, we've got 89,000 damage. We've got four kills. There's still an Ishizuki out here with quite a few hit points to take. So we're going to see what we can do to take him. Now, unfortunately, he did end up killing our uh, carrier, and that's mostly our carrier's fault. He could have at any point just turned around and run away. That's where carrier players struggle the most. Uh, bad carrier players just don't understand that they can disengage. They literally can run away. They are faster than most people as we get our first shot of armor piercing against them and get a very good result. Three penetrations, a nice solid hit. Now, again, this guy's spamming HE, so I don't even have to dreadnought shuffle this guy. I'm just going to sit here and take it. Like, he can't kill me with HE faster than I can kill him with AP. Even double fire me with a damage con on cooldown. Oh no, I'm screwed, right? Wrong. Because I'm firing AP and he's going to die before me. Now there, I thought he was dead. He did turn in, to his credit. He did turn in, so he limited how many shells actually penetrated there. But still... You can see, we went from what, 23 to 14? Oh my god, we've lost 10,000 health, guys. Ah, it's terrible. But again, he goes to fire the rear guns. He's going to be broadside. We've got a fast reload. We can we can take advantage. And down he goes, crack and unleash. So, we get a fireproof. We get a, uh, what, what, let's just read our medals out, shall we? We get a 106,000 damage, fireproof, high caliber, Kraken Unleashed, 2,395 base XP at Tier 3. That's good in a battleship at Tier 3. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.